I'm standing on top of a hillside in Cold Spring, Kentucky, and what you're seeing revealed are limestone shale rocks on the hillside here and across the street, across the Double A Highway in Cold Spring, Kentucky. We see hundreds of layers of limestone alternating with shale. And this is a very geologically famous uh, rock layer. It's named the Cincinnatian. The city of Cincinnati is right on top of what's called the Cincinnati Arch. It extends outwards about 200 miles in all direction. Ordovician age rocks are right underneath the topsoil. The topsoil extends downwards anywhere a few inches to a few feet. And the irony is extremely rich that the foundation of all our homes underneath all the topsoil is this age of Ordovician rock. And here are some that's broken up in this uh, some rocks here that are broken up. You see the gray shale and the thick limestone. This is the foundation of all our homes, restaurants, malls. All the buildings rest on this as a foundation. People have, in and around here, for well over 100 years, have gone out and collected fossils in these uh, rich, fossil-rich layers. Uh, fossils of trilobites and seashells, some of the very earliest life forms on Earth. And the irony couldn't be any richer that the Creationist Museum is built upon rocks like this, which prove both the antiquity of the Earth and biological evolution. I'd like to show you what's in some of these rocks. If we look carefully at all these rocks, we'll see all kinds of seashells, brachiopods, bryozoans, and it's hard to find a rock that isn't clustered with fossils of one type or another. A matter of fact, right here, that gray area right in the middle, that's the head of a trilobite. What's unique about all these rocks is they tell, they are hints and indications of the sea communities that were built up slowly over not just thousands or tens of thousands, but millions of years. These are seafloor sediments, and what you see in them are the sea communities that reflect an enormous passage of time. If the creationists view that all sedimentary rocks were laid down by Noah's flood, that would have been, if you are a biblical literalist, that would have been less than a year's time for all these sediments to come through. There's no way to organize them the way they have been by life. That is, these are clusters of life forms that existed in a sea community, a thriving sea community. If they'd been transported and dumped, it would be randomized and there would be no rhyme or reason to them. They would have had an appearance of being dumped. These do not. These are just the opposite. These rocks show organization of communities. That is, one life form breeding successfully generation upon generation. You notice that predominantly these are all the same type of uh, brachiopod. They're all clustered together because they live together and they were breeding and multiplying like crazy. It was a very good... This happens in today's oceans and seas too. You do get mixing of certain species, of course, but you also have clusters of a lot of life forms sticking together. And that happened because this is where they grew, lived, and died. If they were all transported from thousands of miles away from Noah's Flood, they would not have this appearance. It would be a jumbled appearance. You wouldn't have these things segregated by species. You wouldn't see the gradations of their evolution, their uh, transitional forms, exactly arranged the way they are all over the Earth. This shows another little reef of bryozoans, and they grew here. They grew, lived, and died here. They were not washed in by Noah's Flood. They we find their bases attached, and even if you go with the vapor canopy uh, hypothesis believed by the creationists that life forms flourished and grew very quickly uh, during or before the flood, it still does not adequately explain the multitude of layers above. There's no way you can have life forms springing forth and growing in mere seconds what takes uh, centuries millions of years of buildup of all these sediments. So there's no way to adequately explain what we're seeing except that this is ancient history. They lived and died here. They were not
This is another very large colony of broken bryozoans. Here's a bryozoan that has been pieced back together. Bryozoan is similar to coral. Connor, what did you find? Brachiopon seashells. Show us. Hold your hand real still. All these little seashells he's finding. That's what it's like to collect them. Everywhere. Keegan found a whole trilobite. It's very muddy. We'll wash this up at home. He found it right as I was finding my crinoids. Keegan, point to it, Connor. Hold on. Okay, don't touch it yet. Move your finger. Move your shadow. Nice fossilized snail. Keegan, show me yours. And this one was just found. Keegan found this one. This is the fragment of a cephalopod that's a siphuncal going right through the center. This poster illustrates the Ordovician life, sea life community that was alive during the Ordovician. And we're seeing here's the nautiloid cephalopods, the squid like creature. Um, here's the fossilized representations of the fragments of its shell that we found. Over here are, is an illustration of the bryozoan. They are similar to coral. Here's a fragmented one. Oh, this is an articulated. This one can be glued back together to, again, resemble some of the illustration. And here's the trilobite. Here's one of the trilobites we found. You found. There's the brachiopod, the little tiny seashells. There's the real seashells that we found. There's horn coral and the snails. And here are some of the snails that we found. So in one afternoon, in less than two hours, we found these creatures in fossilized form. We confirmed what the scientists have been saying, uh, what they show in the science books of what the Ordovician was like. The things, now this illustration shows an, an early Ordovician fish, and it differs than modern day fish. It looks like an armored tadpole and the first fish on earth were jawless. That's significant because modern day fish modern day fish show um, all types of stabilizing fins and they do indeed have jaws. These fish were, are not found in, among Cincinnati fossils. If biblical literalism were true, if what they were teaching at the Creation Museum that God created all species of sea life on the same day, whether that day is a 24-hour period or a thousand years or even a million years. That's not what we see in the earth. The earth itself shows the history, the ancient history of the earth and the development of these species. Unlike terrestrial creatures, which there are quite a bit Terrestrial fossils are so rare, there are many gaps, but with the sea creatures, it's different because they exist by the billions. We, can, we, have, we have wonderful representations of their evolutionary history in the geologic column. That is snails, trilobites, crinoids, and uh, seashells. We know of their evolutionary past and how they change from one species to another. We can indeed line them up in a row almost as if the frames of a movie to show how their bodies evolved over time.